How's it going, Eliminators? Today I'm going to be showing you how to test a riding lawnmower solenoid. Previously, I've done how to test an ATV solenoid, and it's basically the same thing, but I'm going to do a separate video specifically for riding lawnmowers. So let's get right into it. So before we get into testing this solenoid, I just want to briefly explain how these solenoids work. So we have a three post and a four post solenoid here. They're basically the same thing. The only thing that's different is the way they ground. So on this three post solenoid, you're going to have your ground through the base of the actual unit itself. So wherever the solenoid bolts up to the frame, that's where you get your ground from. Now battery positive comes from your battery to your key switch and then from your key switch down to this terminal right here. As soon as you power this solenoid, you're going to hear it click and that clicking is the electromagnet being engaged. Now inside of this solenoid we have two posts and when the electromagnet engages, it raises a metal bar that makes a connection between this terminal and that terminal. And basically, these terminals have one wire coming down from your battery positive to here. Then we have another cable coming from this terminal going down to the starter on your riding lawnmower. So when you turn your key switch, it sends 12 volts from your battery to the key switch and then down into the solenoid. The solenoid clicks, engages the electromagnet. That electromagnet picks up makes a connection between your battery and your starter, and that's what spins your starter. As soon as you release your key switch, it discharges the solenoid, which discharges the electromagnet, thus cutting the 12 volts from your battery to your starter cable. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to test these things. Things you're gonna need is a multimeter that can test 12 volts DC and also test on continuity as well. Now the second thing you're going to need is a source of 12 volts. I have here a lithium ion battery pack and it has a couple big alligator clips. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this to power the solenoid. Now when you power a solenoid it's going to click and your electromagnet is going to be on. What you don't want to do is leave this thing powered up for a long period of time. That is similar to holding the key switch on your riding lawnmower for a long period of time. This thing will heat up. So on a four post solenoid you're going to hook up your ground cable from your battery pack here and you're going to hook up your battery positive cable from your battery pack there that will be a charged powered solenoid so you should hear it click now that will let us know whether or not the electromagnet works so right now we're just going to do a 12 volt test on the solenoid now i know that when i turned the key that the solenoid clicked which means that the solenoid is getting 12 volts from the key switch there so using a smaller alligator connector hooked down to the battery positive going back to my battery pack if i touch this connector you guys are going to hear the solenoid click now I have a Stenz part number 435-431, and this is what's known as a three-post solenoid, or what Stenz calls it as a single pole. So I like these ones better because they have their own ground wire, whereas these ones, a lot of times, you're going to have them bolted to a riding lawnmower frame, and sometimes you can get a little bit of rust built up there so that the ground ends up getting bad. Now what's going to happen is if you go to check your battery on 20 volts DC, and it shows that you have a full fully charged battery and you turn your key but you can't hear your solenoid click, if you have a three post, chances are you just have a bad ground. But we can go ahead and test this the same way we did before except instead of hooking the ground to the fourth pole there, we're just going to simply hook it to the base and then we're going to take our battery positive and touch it there and you guys can hear that also clicks. So we are now through the halfway point of our test. And you're going to think, why would we continue to test it if the solenoid clicks? Well, what we want to do next is a continuity test. So what we're going to do is come down to our multimeter here. And you guys can see it's not reading anything yet. And if we touch these two leads together here, you guys are going to see that we do, in fact, have continuity. So what we're going to do is charge the solenoid. And then we're going to go ahead and do a continuity test here in between the two posts. And we should get a reading of continuity, which means that when you charge your solenoid with 12 volts from the battery through the key switch to the solenoid, that means that you are getting a connection through these two posts here so that your battery positive is coming to here and your starter cable is going from here out to your starter. Now, if I run this same exact test on our old solenoid and we try to check for continuity with a charged solenoid, you guys can see that we are 
are in fact getting continuity through those two posts, which means that it's not our solenoid that was bad in the case of that yard works. So to wrap up here, if you guys go ahead and charge your solenoid and you don't hear your solenoid click, go ahead and throw it out and go buy yourself a new solenoid and you want to make sure that you test the new one to make sure that that clicks. Once you hear it click when it's charged, then what you're going to want to do is leave it charged and do a continuity test between these two terminals here. And as long as you have continuity here, that means your solenoid is good. So in the case of the yard works that I was working on, the solenoid isn't the issue. And if you guys want to see what the issue was on that yard works mower, you're just going to have to stay tuned for that video to be posted. Well, that's it for today's video, guys. Testing solenoids is super easy. You just have to have the right equipment and know the procedure to do the proper test. If you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week. Check the channel out for new content. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.